Tuscany Trail. Its reputation precedes us. The annual bikepacking monument might probably be the biggest of its kind. 750 starters enjoying a common ride through the historical Tuscany with all its UNESCO World Heritage. Roman buildings from an era even before Christ to just 300, 400 years after and beyond, and all combined with an incredible landscape. So that ride simply made us too curious. At the same time, we love the idea of meeting like-minded cycle enthusiasts, hear their stories, share experiences and travel plans for the near future. So we packed our stuff, met in Massa at the day of registration and set up our gear. Pretty excited what to come. Well, it was really nice to meet everyone, finally. The vibe among, among everybody that was riding was fantastic, like, you're saying hello to everybody, everybody's really cheerful. did not feel competitive at all, because it's not, but sometimes people treat it like that, but it wasn't, and everybody's saying hello and chatting, and you're all there for the same reason. So when I got to the plaza, there were so many riders there, fantastic. I don't think I've seen that many loaded bikes in my life, and it was cool, like, got to see Lots of cool different setups. Yeah, the morning we arrived at the plaza was very humbling because there were many, many riders. I've never seen so many riders together in one place. Everyone was in a good mood. Like people were just chilling and waiting for the event to start. But everybody was really friendly. It was nice to set off quite early. And then when we actually did set off, it was felt like some form of alley cat. Everyone kind of just going through the streets, lots of people. Yeah, it was re really enjoyable, really enjoyed it. It was a good, good mass start, I would say. When the ride started, it felt good because we, we knew we wanted to take it easy. So just letting the whole bunch of people scatter along the trail. It took some, some time for everyone to find his own base. Very, a very relaxed start. I think the first few days are probably the toughest and then it kind of gradually gets a bit easier. Um, whether it actually does or you, you just get used to the riding, it's one way or another, I'm not sure. Uh, we were a group of like nine people and I was a bit worried about this in the beginning because as always like big groups are really hard um, to yeah to put in order because everyone just does something and then that happens and like one needs to go to the toilet one needs to like change his jacket one needs to tie his shoes and one needs to eat it's like really difficult to manage a big group but I think we did really well and I really enjoyed riding in such a big group because I think we also really did stick together. Um, I wasn't expecting to ride with the whole group the whole day, but it actually worked out. Like the the fastest people waited at the top, then the slow people catch like the slow people catched up, and then we continued together until like we split up again, and then we would wait and stop and wait and stop, which actually was quite nice. Even though everything took a little bit longer, we made it in the end, which I think was awesome.
bite picking in Tuscany is pretty straightforward because there's water almost everywhere and you're coming through villages all the time so it's really easy because you don't have to carry much and you can resupply everywhere so it's nice and easy for the cultural social bike picking experience i would say and it was actually funny that we figured out that the water at every fountain had like a slightly different taste and uh, yeah that was like interesting I'm ready for pasta fish. Pasta. Pasta. What kind of pasta? Gnocchi? Huh? It, it, it or, doesn't uh, matter. Or, it doesn't matter. Just pasta. <laughs> Italy so coffee was <laughs> was a big thing. We stopped quite often to have an espresso, just a break in the morning or the midday or afternoon, then go back on the bikes. Which is a which is a very nice break. Da Vinci Road <laughs> We're on his way to his house See if he's home Party hardy He's gonna find a nice little camping Spot <laughs> Actually don't know where We don't know where So but we're pretty close to Firenze uh, Firenze <laughs> It's really hot And uh, We're at kilometer 112 now and yeah, so we're making progress. Cheers. Good day. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Oh man, what a nice place. Are you still happy with your trailer? Yeah, I love it. I would. But sometimes it's a bit tricky. What's the plan for tomorrow? When are we waking up? No. You wanna, you wanna ask the boss? <laughs> He's gonna say five, so... Yeah, don't ask him. <laughs> but just decide. Well, I made plans to, to get up at five, so... about Italy is the espresso bars because they're all very cool and old and 
yeah kind of like rusty sometimes and you walk in there and you like pick up your espresso like it's like one euro or like 80 cents and it's like you have all these like men and women like standing at the at the bar talking like having their morning espresso and i really like the atmosphere of these um espresso bars it's really nice Like the small streets in the uh, little towns. Yeah, it's brilliant. It fun. <laughs> and look at the views. Brilliant. Nice. <laughs> All right, fish. Let's go. I really love traveling with the trailer. I mean, as far as I remember, I did my first bikepacking trip ever in 91. And at that time, there was no fancy word named bikepacking. It was simply called touring. Coming from there, the next step was using a trailer. Since then, I simply felt in love with riding it. I still try to do every journey I'm heading to with the trailer. And that's what I thought about the Tuscany as well. But I must confess, for the trail, I actually underestimated it a bit. All its meter of elevation and the amount of daily climbing, the incredible heat and sometimes pretty rough trails. Coming all together, that was really a lot. Sometimes I was so slow, my Garmin claimed I would auto pause the whole time when I was riding. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm still so much to go. Yeah. I take as a <laughs> as a first one. I take pasta. Then yes. as a second one, like a main dish, I take pasta and then dessert. <laughs> Another pasta. During the first two and a half days, it was quite funny to watch Manuel and his trailer bouncing up and down the trails. But even watching Manuel try to keep up with us, with the trailer, with the heavy trailer, with all the luggage inside, was even for us quite exhausting. So we made the decision to, to get rid of the trailer in a cafe. Awesome. We need to come up with a stupid idea, so I'm gonna grab some beer. Yeah, buy some beers. Nice. There's a bike shop. There's a bike shop. Do you need something from a bike shop? The tarmac ones are always easy because they don't requ require any techniques at all. As for the rocky ones, <laughs> the first ones were really difficult because I'm not used to that at all. Uh, I think it got better <laughs> at the end. It was achievable 
uh, even if you've never done it. You just learn, learn on the terrain and learn on the way. You just get better at the end. favorite part were the Strada Bianchi parts, the white gravel roads. Strada Bianca, which was a really nice bit of the trail, as you can really ride fast and the gravel road is really really nice to, to cycle on. Like the weather was really hot for the Tuscany trail, which was really good in the forecast because that meant there was no rain, so we didn't have to bring any rain jackets or a tent or anything. I would think that in summer, in this region, in the Tuscany, it's really hot conditions. It's more about taking care of the sun rather than worrying about being too cold or anything like that. Um, before going there, I thought that Tuscany was a very dry place and it was really green, like green everywhere. A different green tone, so the green from the wheat fields to the green from the leaves, whether it was pine trees or oaks or anything. Dark green or shiny greens, which were really nice, especially with the sun with the bright sun. I think the heat in combination with the climbing was like the hardest. Like climbing when it was like a little bit cool in the afternoon was like way easier. Climbing in the heat was, yeah, that was the tough part. <laughs> Por favor. <coughs> Gracias. The Italian way of life, I've never been to Italy, so it was all new to me, but they're fantastic, like super friendly, but they can be a bit fiery sometimes. Unfortunately, I don't really speak much Italian. <laughs> Like, I don't really drink coffee, and I think that was a, a lot of Italian people don't really understand that. <laughs> Seems like coffee's a way of life out here. I'm trying not to use cliche phrases, but um, yeah, they, they're passionate about what they're passionate about, and they let you know what they think. <laughs> Even though I don't drink coffee, they were still, still really interested in what we were up to, and yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> When you ride with, like, with a group, you make every decision together. But when we crossed the river, yeah, Matty just decided to go for it, and there was no discussion. He just like raised his arms. He was like, "I'm going to the river," and he just like headed down the road. So it was actually quite good. We all jumped in the river. Finally, water. And it was really, really nice to like cool off a little bit, um, get the shirt wet, cool down, and have like a swim. It was really relaxing. <laughs> Last night when it was getting dark, I saw a barn next to the track and it turned out it was just a brilliant camp spot. It was an open barn with hay in it, so it was very comfy to sleep in. The views, especially in the morning, the sunrise was awesome. For me, it was the best camp spot we had during the trip.
fantastic because you drop into this valley and you just see this town perched on the top of it and it's I don't even understand how they built it like I don't understand how they'd be able to build it nowadays let alone all that time ago when they built it and then this guy comes out this really old dude like maybe 70 80 years old and he comes running out of his house oh, there's bikers so nice oh, I want to show you something so he took us inside And in the middle of the room, there was this really nice old yellow Tomasini and pristine. And then he was showing all these pictures on the wall, like, oh, I want this one, I raised that one, and my son is racing, and my, my wife always came with me. Oh man, that was so nice that we were just enjoying for like about 15 minutes inside of this old man, uh, couple's house, talking about cycling and trying to understand what they're saying, because of course we're talking Italian <clears throat> and we don't. <laughs> you just have to see it, it's so nice, you know, like that's the little things that, that you want to enjoy on the way on, on a trip like this. When we got to the final stretch on this island, we were kind of prepared for the worst, I think. So we were expecting a really rough and maybe annoying trail, but I was surprised and I would probably say it's the nicest section of the whole route. Riding wise, it is challenging in parts maybe, but it's really nice. And for me personally, the most important thing is it's probably the only section which is not populated. So it's basically a remote spot. You have the ocean and you have of nature and that's it and the riding is fun this is a slow squat <laughs> slow but steady that's what we call ourselves wow wow holy fucking shit <laughs> my mind is blown The island was, the riding was really good. It was really steep, especially the hills kick really steeply. And you really, really feel it. Personally, I did. I think we had this long running joke that a meter in Italy is twice that of a meter in England. <laughs> it's a country of hills. There's not much flat. So. <laughs> I can't ignore it. Especially people that's annoying. Take your happy 
this and it's real. Now my cuz I'm a warrior, can't take me out by euphoria. Blame me for your Missouri, I take that though, I don't deserve it. I'm on my path, you got me swerving. I lost control and hit the curb, and I lost my confidence. I'm nervous now, I got to get back to searching for that soul inside the golden prize. It's only mine. Like home inside of the cold, eating them chili fries. My cheese slice, and a soup with these surprise. One word, one word, beer, beer, beer. I already had one. Yes, <laughs> please. You, you remember the time when everything was free and good? Uh, no, no. Oh, I do. <laughs> free stuff's relatively new to me. But it is good, it is good. Actually, so what am I saying? Everything that's free is good. Oh. Yeah. Especially this. Oh, this is free. This is free, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's free for me. Outside, outside is free. Outside it's free. You're not wrong there. <clears throat>